Drew, it's good to be back. Uh, you and I just got back from the road one of the first times in a long time, uh, it seems like, but we were lucky enough to attend the great conference Brighton SEO in San Diego. Uh, they're going to be back next year. Highly, highly recommended, but it was a really exciting conference. A lot of smart people attending some interesting takeaways. So we thought we'd, we'd kick this one off there with some, some core themes and ideas that came from the conference that might be worth sharing. So, uh, what, what were your, uh, takeaways there, Drew? Yeah, Ross, it was great to see you in real life and other seizures and old colleagues. And, uh, yeah, hopefully if you're listening and you were there that we didn't have a chance to meet that we can meet in the, in the next one. Um, I think one of the biggest takeaways was the conversation around AI, which is taking over the internet, of course, but Danny Sullivan, um, in his keynote was pretty clear that it's interesting. Um, that Google's approach is like, if the content is quality and helpful, they don't mind ranking it no matter who or what wrote it. I thought that was an interesting take. Um, I'm not quite sure like what it's gonna mean. There was a full spectrum of AI conversations all the way from like, it's not something you should be doing, which was pretty common, but also all the way to like one person that's like, we're going all in, we're generating thousands of words per month with AI and just publishing. So, uh, but I liked, of course, very biased. I liked your take, um, your conversation about feeding the model with quality to get quality results. Like you need best in class inputs to get best in class outputs. I think you're putting your presentation on YouTube. So maybe we can link to that in the show notes. Is that true? Yeah. So by the, if you're listening to this now, it will already be live on YouTube. If you're listening to this as a podcast, we didn't publish the podcast feed because it needed that context, but I, we did record it. Uh, so yeah, I appreciate that shout out Drew. And uh, yeah, I did a live version for everybody if it's in, of, of interest. Cool. Um, another thing that was thrown around a lot was link relevancy. And of course, most people know what this is. Um, and I think a lesson that we've learned from organic link building in concert with manual link building, which is something we're going to talk about today is that the having a blend of both actually keeps you on brand on topic. And like, so if you're hundred percent in digital PR, one thing that we've seen happen is that people maybe slowly or not so slowly start to go deviating off of their brand and going into more clickbait type content. So I think if you can do a blend of uh, organic link building and digital PR type strategies, it helps you just stay on authority, like topic authority. What do you think, Ross? Yeah, yeah, I agree. It, it's probably the most natural way of doing so. And it's why we often recommend it in a lot of verticals. Like there's not going to be a linkable audience online that you can reach out to in like construction. There's not a ton of like construction, even news sites. Um, but if you naturally rank for things like they, the relevancy that does exist will find you in those things, but not always is there, as we call it, a linkable audience online. So it was interesting to hear that as a theme. There were a lot of UK digital PR people there. So I think that's some of the kind of echoes they're feeling or maybe getting asked more often from their clients is around relevancy. So it's a good conversation overall, uh, for sure. Yeah. I agree, but it segues nicely into like what we've learned from uh, a post that we published in a podcast back in June of 2022. So it's been almost 18 months since we stopped mostly doing manual link building. Um, Ross, what are some of the, the key takeaways and like how have we transitioned from that point to now? Yeah, so that was a big step for us. Uh, essentially, the blog post thesis is that if you hit a lot of the check marks as a company that you need to hit to rank for things, you will be able to generate organic links at much better scale in doing so. And it also focuses on the right things, site quality, um, user experience, and what have you, as compared to disconnecting those initiatives. That was some of the core thesis behind our shift where we had for 10 years done really 80, it was kind of like slowly evolved over time where we were like 70% manual outreach, slowly became more like 50%. And now more recently, we're still doing a good amount. It's mostly in 
uh, harder to achieve link verticals, but it's around 20% number. Um, but we're pushing more and more, even when we are doing manual link building, it's for the purpose of organic link generations. It's simply a nudge almost all the time. Uh, so one of our, like, it was not without lessons though, is a big step. So when we've done it and the success and when it hasn't gone as well, like the biggest takeaway for us in the, in the last year is just emphasizing and ramping the aggressiveness of the ass around web design. So you can of course bring people great web design that they pay for and believe it or not, they don't even implement it sometimes. So Drew, you and I in business development are essentially setting up all of the emphasis points to make sure that's absolutely clear from the start. So we'll do things like break out a slide in our proposals to say, you're not going to hit these goals unless you implement this within 90 days. Also, we're doing things like adding a sentence in contracts that says the same things. We've had that for a good amount. We're making it even louder recently. We're bolding that sentence. Uh, we're thinking about adding another con just like uh, PDF that they sign that says like, we're going to implement this. And the goal of that is so we can not just be jerks about it, but more so start setting them up to make those conversations happen internally, even before the, the conversation kicks off. Because we work with a lot of big brands and it's understandable that sometimes things take time. Maybe we didn't do as good of a job as we could have emphasizing how important that is. So that's like one of the main situations this does not have success is that of course it doesn't get implemented or it doesn't get implemented correctly. So a lot of the thesis breaks down from that very important phase of the, uh, of the equation. Yeah. I mean, it's pretty, I mean, it's understandable that there's resource constraints on, you know, company wide, but it's so vital for all aspects of content, like from a link perspective, yes. Like even having a clean about page or a clean home page, because people typically click around and make sure it's a valid resource or citation for them to share. Um, but also like other full funnel stage content, like it's only going to help site wide. Like there's, that's like the one piece of the puzzle that's like foundational. It's like the keystone of a arch, if that makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I agree. And it's really like to that point, Drew, I think that's a great point that that's thematically something we've done and continue to do over the last 18 months is people come in the door for something. And in a lot of ways, we're helping them achieve that thing, but it's almost like in the aim of helping you do something bigger, like make your site better, make it have a better user experience. And a lot of them, of course, have a certain initiative from above. I have a link building budget, but like what we're trying to do is get them to change the way they think. And not always is that possible. Sometimes it's harder than others are stuck in that older way of like, we're going to go pay for links and like, as, as we had a blog post probably 18 months ago, like by far the people that come into us wanting content marketing are on average way more successful than the people that come in asking for link building, even though they end up getting the same things at the end of the day, because it's a, it's a, it's a mindset. And the good news is people are open to the conversation. I think it's gotten slightly easier over time. I, I don't know about you, Drew, but, uh, it, it seems like it, it's starting, we're seeing more shift, more yeses and less objection to that conversation than we had 18 months ago. But uh, feel free to disagree with me. No, I agree. And I think well, maybe one thing is because we oftentimes include like an example of how we would improve blog design in our proposal period. And I think that's just like, it shows them like a mirror of what they could look like. And that's so powerful. Yeah, I agree. Our web team is very strong. And thematically tied to what you said there as well, like something that's happened twice. We just signed contracts with two clients in the last three months, both came in the door for us for link building. What we ended up signing them to was a web design retainer. So that just kind of gives you a sense of like some of that, uh, that, that importance and just sometimes really what you, what you don't need is links is you need the other thing, but that's our, that's the good news is like, it shows we're adding some value hopefully. And in, in that conversation and, uh, beyond just being a link vendor, which is always generally appreciated from clients. Right. I'm going to drop some dad advice. My dad told me when, you know, no matter how big your company is project a big shadow as if you, so like web design, 
if you have a clean UI UX, it's not that difficult to achieve. And it can just present full trust, transparency, EAT. Like, I want to ask you, what do you think about how brand and I guess just EEAT signals impact manual and organic links since this whole transitionary period? Yeah, hugely. I mean, uh, you made me think also, and people might listen to this and be like, I don't have the budget to redesign my website. And that's a good, that's the create the wild thing about this. It's like some of the web design implementations we suggest, they do require lift to implement, but they're more, we call them tweaks sometimes. Sometimes it's a full overhaul. Um, we still try to be very cost effective because we know people don't come in the door for that. They want the links, but they could, most people spend under 10,000 a month or 10,000 just to get to good, sometimes less than that with us um, for a premium brand. So it's like not a major lift, but somehow it still doesn't happen or people push back about it. But that that eat goal is definitely important. And, and uh, another theme or lesson is definitely we help with that overall idea. But something we have learned sometimes is like, sometimes you'll have authority, relative authority in your space and we can hit a lot of these core elements and we can rank quite well, but the organic links might not come at the same scale if your relative eat is still lower to the, than the SERP competition. So you can imagine if you're in a space where you're a lead gen player and all the first parties are massive mm -hmm. brands that are on TV and they're all trying to rank for terms that are organic link topics, even if you have a really good looking asset and it's high quality, your relative like number of links you're going to get compared to them is going to be lower. And that's not just an organic manual link problem. That's, that's the same thing that's going to happen when you reach out to people. So it's, it's just bringing that same trend with it, but it's been a thing we've iterated on over time is that we we're still promising and feel very confident we're going to drive organic links. But if you're not that first party, big brand, the scale is just going to vary. But when you are that big brand, the numbers are wild. We have, you just did math on a client, Drew. And uh, do you remember what the the cost per link relative w was for what you pulled from their URLs? Oh, um, from a client of ours, right? Yeah, we were just doing a little product. Yeah, I think it was in like sub $60 range, but I could be misremembering. What was it? Yeah, something around there. Uh, de depends on how you painted the picture. It could be, it was like $11 in some instances, I think very easily under a hundred. It was a mix of refreshes and non. That's why it was a little money um, in, in terms of the metrics, but that they're a brand and that kind of just gives you a sense. And that we're doing so much else other than just links. Links were just a byproduct of the high quality content and they achieved a 60 cost per link. So that just gives you a sense. But like, and then if you scale that in your non-big brand version of that company, same best practices live on that site might be 500 cost per link. That's probably more realistic on a, a long-term timeline. Uh, but it's just good to know relatively is that like at the end of the day, I mean, brand still hugely matters. We still need to pick the right people in our, our world to make sure they get the return they want. And, and for the people listening to this that are aspirationally building brands, of course, uh, pie in the sky, but continue to work in that effort and everything is going to benefit more strongly from holistic, uh, uh, marketing. Yeah. And I, I think it maybe is under appreciated how much like the SERP presence or like your SERP footprint can play into brand awareness. And so like having a full funnel strategy where, you're incorporating like organic link strategies, but also maybe more top and middle funnel content because especially if you're staying on topic and on brand, the people that are going to cite you eventually in organic links are probably looking at the other stuff and seeing you show up and therefore building at least a little bit of trust. Like, oh yeah, I've seen them. They're, they're ranking for other stuff. Like it builds that EEAT from the cert perspective. Does that make sense? Yeah, I agree. Like good content marketing for us. We can't stand alone, build the brand for anybody, but we can definitely contribute strongly. And that's one great way is you have a top funnel search. You have a good impression. You do a middle funnel search. It's still a good impression. And now you've bought from them. Um, so independent of the link outcome that 
I completely agree there, Drew. And it's, it all kind of adds up to success. And that's why it's uh, ironically not always amazing to only focus on link acquisition, even if it's all organic, because we're missing those funnel stages and how we support those things and all that. So maybe that, maybe that's our podcast 18 months from now. <laughs> we could just take full credit for all brand teams, you know, all the work they've done. Yeah, we yeah. just get all the credit. We're really, we're, we're just brand marketers at the end of the day. <laughs> Not actually a lot of, a lot of great, we, when a team, when a company has a great brand team, we're always very pumped about that. We know it's just going to go quite well overall. All right, Ross, to sum everything up, um, we've, we'll see you next year at Brighton SEO. We got a lot, hopefully it's like we've gone beyond AI. There's actually AGI at that point, And all of us are just sitting on the beach. Links are being built on in the back and we're living very well. Um, we also have kind of evolved our, we, we went on both sides of the, the gradient of from fully manual link building to organic link building. And now we're somewhere in the middle. Anything else to add? You actually made me thought about, think of something that else that changed in the last year. We used to use the phrasing passive link building a decent amount. We realized that's just like passive income. It's not actually a thing. You got to work to make that, to be able to sleep and make money in your sleep. The Takes same is true money. for, yeah, the same thing is true of link building. Like it's organic. We're working towards these things happening without reaching out to people, but it takes work. So you're not truly passively doing that. Uh, very rarely does that actually happen, uh, unfortunately. So that that framing in matters. I think it's worth echoing that when having these conversations as it could change mindset for people a little bit. But uh, yeah, overall, um, yeah, still believe in the value manual link building, especially when the ROI is there. That's where it comes down to. We do that math for our clients. Like it, does the manual cost per link warrant that, that investment? If it's like 10 times what that cost is, or even eight or seven, it probably is worth it, especially if you have extra resources to do that. And that's not going to change and we're going to keep doing that. Uh, we are nudging content to rank more often. That's sort of our current philosophy shift where we're a lot of manual outreach for us is an aim of creating this organic snowball more than one-offs than we ever have. We, we, we re really rarely are suggesting ever doing a just pure digital PR asset without tied search volume, given all the dynamics and the relevancy issues you mentioned. So um, yeah, links still matter. In the last year, Google has talked about the three ranking factors. It's no longer a big one. Like I think all of this was sort of in front of that idea that it, we like this because even if it's a number four, we're generating more at scale. So we're helping lift that equation where we're winning significantly on number four, ideally. So none of that scares us, but links still matter. And yeah, maybe a year from now, uh, I'm sure things will have changed pretty significantly, but I, I think we might be surprised how, how the, how the same they are. Uh, but maybe we can do a refresh of this and, and check in. Yeah. I think I have a really obscure analogy. We're like the whole foods of link building. We have the organic vegetables, but we're also putting like processed foods on the end caps, trying to like get a little nudge for people to then spend $47 on a jar of almond butter. <laughs> <laughs> and we're out. <laughs>